Hey, this is Robert, and today I'm going to go through Virtual Set 1, which is one of uh, a number of backgrounds that we have for chroma key video productions. Um, so basically what we have here is a couple different sequences um, set up. Um, I'll just kind of play it through here so you can see kind of what we're dealing with a little bit. Um, we have a talent layer, a studio background layer, and a B-roll layer. And so this is uh, one setup. And then the other sequence that we have, which is kind of another view a little further um, back on the studio. And we have these two animated, uh, dual animated monitors here that drop down in uh, from the sky and have footage placed in there. Um, the software that I'm using is Premiere Pro CS5. Um, but the um, uh, techniques and kind of what I'm doing here can be used in really any video editing program. Um, we usually recommend uh, Premiere, Premiere Elements, Final Cut, Final Cut Express, uh, Vegas, uh, which I think is now called Movie Studio, um, you know, any number of uh, video editors, Pinnacle, um, they all can do pretty much, you know, what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just uh, kind of showing it within Premiere because it's one of the ones that I know uh, best. So let me um, delete out my files and my file bin there and I'll kind of uh, show you how I set up the project and uh, hopefully it'll kind of help you with your workflow and uh, you know any kind of chroma key video productions that you're doing. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, these are all my studio backgrounds that come with the uh, Virtual Set 1 um, series and so I'm going to set up a, a folder within my file bin um, and just call this one Studios there and then I'm going to select all of my uh, studio backgrounds and drag and drop them into the folder there. And so those will import. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is grab uh, the footage that I'm going to be using. So I've got this uh, uh, lady who was shot on a green screen and then we have this um, kind of B-roll breaking news uh, motion graphic that we're going to use in the background. Um, so let me set up a folder called footage and then I will select those two and then import them into the footage folder there. Okay, and so the next thing that you want to do within uh, um, Premiere Pro or really whatever video editor you're using is to set up a new sequence for your edit. So uh, down here there's a button for new item. We'll say new item, new sequence. Click on that. Um, this is kind of where you choose your resolution, frame rates, and all that stuff. So hopefully you kind of know how to do that. Um, I'm going to do a, a 1080p um, uh, sequence. So we'll call this one Studio 1A. Hit OK. And uh, so first thing we got to do is uh, choose what studio background um, we want to use. So there's a number of uh, different ones down here, um, but I think I'm going to do um, the Studio 1 Dual Animated and drag it down onto your timeline. I'm actually going to drag it onto the second layer, um, and I'll show you why in just a second. Um, Okay, so you can kind of see this studio. It's basically, uh, you know, you've got these dual animated monitors that drop down from the sky and, uh, you know, nice little studio background and whatnot. Um, so let me uh, go ahead and title this layer um, right here, Video 2. Uh, if you right-click on the layer name, you can ask it to rename, and we'll call this one Studio. There. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is drag my uh, talent footage down onto the timeline. I'm going to put it above the, uh, the studio layer. So let me drag her down on top. And uh, there she is, shot on the green screen there. I'll go ahead and right click on this video uh, three layer and rename this talent. Okay. And so next thing is to remove the uh, green, uh, green screen in her shot. Um, and so we do that through a uh, chroma key effect. And uh, there are a few um, different chroma key effects in Premiere um, built in that come with it. And uh, if you start, if you come over to, if you open up your effects window, which you can come to window and effects, it's this window right here. Um, you can drill down through the video um, effects, or you can also, um, for a kind of quicker way to do it, is there's a little search icon right there. You can click on that and start typing in. Um, the name of the effect that you're looking. So if we type in key, it brings up all of the keying effects um, that we're looking for. Now there is a built-in chroma key um, effect um, that you can try. Um, I found that if you use it, it tends to um, not work quite as well as a different effect. Um, you can, I'll show you. Uh, you click it and you 
can adjust the settings on it and it does okay but it uh, you can kind of see that the hair has really hard time with unless you have a really really perfectly lit scene um, it's it's pretty difficult to work with um, but there's another keying effect that comes with Premiere called Ultra Key and so if you click and drag that onto your um, onto your talent footage layer there um, in the effects controls window which you can get to if you go to window effects controls um, then you will see the ultra key drop down and you'll want to click the eyedropper tool um, next to key color you click that and then you click uh, really when you click kind of close to your talent you don't want to click uh, up in you know these areas or further away from your talent you want to get the color that's closest to the person that you are uh, trying to uh, remove the screen from um, if you click over here it's just kind of a different green than it is over here just because of the lighting uh, even on a perfectly lit screen. So you want to kind of click close to the person. So click that and uh, generally it will um, do a pretty good job. You'll see that there's a little bit of a cleanup that needs to be done, adjustments and that kind of thing, um, which you can do with all these different drop downs. Um, what I found, found is pretty good is this setting right here. You can do a, uh, the default uh, green screen, screen um, settings. Um, relaxed, which is a uh, minimal um, chroma key removal, aggressive, which uh, goes a little further, and then custom. Um, the aggressive tends to uh, work pretty good, um, so you can kind of uh, experiment with that and uh, you know remove most of the uh, the key from your scene that way. Um, so you kind of see that it's uh, not too bad there. Um, you may have, uh, like we do here, you'll see a little bit of uh, the gradient, gradient there where the, uh, where the lighting just wasn't quite hitting it right. Um, but since that's not where our talent is, we can go ahead and crop kind of down to where our talent um, is within the screen. So you do that by going to your um, effects area again, um, type in crop for crop, um, click and drag the crop effect onto your talent layer and then uh, go to the drop down in your effects controls for crop and then you can crop left you can see it kind of crop her out and you go a little further out so it doesn't crop her off um, and top right we'll just crop it just a little bit like that and that cleans up some of that um, extra um, green screen um, stuff so that way we don't have to go too crazy with the uh, with the chroma key um, removal just to get some you know gradients that are further along the edge of the uh, of the video itself. Um, so the next thing is uh, she's kind of uh, this is kind of more of a centered scene set up for somebody who needs to be centered, um, but she's standing over here. Um, the cool thing is once you've got your uh, crop and your uh, chroma key removed, you can really move her around as much as you want. So if you come over here to motion drop down, um, you can reposition her any which way, up or down, left and right, um, that you'd like to. Um, so you can do a whole, a whole lot there. Um, another kind of cool trick is if you need to flip the person for some reason, if they don't have like a, uh, if they don't have any words or anything like that on their shirt, that would obviously make it um, obvious that they, you know, that the video footage has been flipped. Um, if you need somebody to turn the other way, you can always um, uh, flip them um, horizontally using a um, uh, the flip uh, effect, transform effect in your video. So you can do a horizontal flip click that and drag it over and that'll flip the um, talent to the other direction. So um, you just want to be you know, mindful that if, uh, if they've got something that uh, is a logo or um, uh, text or anything like that on their shirt or clothing or something like that, then uh, that's going to obviously make it look backwards and so you wouldn't want to do that. But if they're just kind of got a blank, you know, regular colored shirt, then you have a little bit more control um, over the final. Um, so you can kind of see there that we've got her in the scene with the uh, with the chroma effect and everything and so the next step for this particular scene is to uh, remove the green in these monitors and then replace it with some b-roll footage that we're going to use um, so the uh, next thing you want to do is uh, same thing come over to the effects um, area uh, type in um, key go down to ultra key again click and drag that onto the uh, onto the studio layer so we're applying the uh, chroma key effect to the studio layer and then we'll drop down the ultra key settings in the effects controls, click on the eyedropper, and then click on the uh, screen, and that will knock it right out there. And you can also adjust those if you need to, to uh, get it a little more. Okay. Um, so we have the uh, monitors coming down, um, fading out. 
um, and then going to whatever is the background. And so this last layer right here, um, and actually we're going to do two layers because we're going to have two pieces of footage, one for each screen. Um, we will uh, rename this one to B-roll 1, and then I'm going to right click and add tracks. Uh, let's see, after B-roll 1, I want to add one video track. And then we'll call this one B-roll 2. And so now go to this uh, breaking news um, graphic right here. Click it and drag it on the timeline. You'll see it show up within the monitors, but that's the whole, it's a full screen graphic, so it's going all the way across. Um, so if you select the um, graphic itself, um, come into motion in the effects controls, scale it down a bit, and then position kind of over and up. and get it just kind of generally into position and just kind of generally have the right scale. It doesn't have to be exact because it's kind of at, acting as a mask when you kind of, uh, when you take that green part out. And then what we're going to do is uh, uh, select this clip, go to Edit, Copy, and then highlight the B-Roll 2 layer, and then put our time slider at the beginning, Edit, Paste, and then we'll select the second B-roll clip and then move its position over to where that monitor is. Right there. All right. And now we have the final scene, which I'll play through you here for you here. And the monitors come down, they fade, they fade into the um, into the B-roll clips that we put there. And uh, that kind of thing. Um, and so, a lot. One of the things that we um, that people ask a lot of times is, um, you know, this clip that they uh, that they have for the studio is uh, only about uh, 14, 15 seconds long. And uh, and how do they keep? You know, they want to they want to have they want to extend it out. You know, their their um, uh, presentation is five minutes long or two minutes long or something like that. And they need to uh, extend it out for for that length of time. And so um, there's kind of a quick and um, easy way to do that. And so what you want to do is you want to uh, bring your time slider to the point where after the uh, monitors have faded up to the, uh, the B-roll footage, they've extended it all the way down. And you want to slice your clip right where that has occurred right there. So we'll do um, uh, put our time slider where we want the slice to happen, and then we'll say Razor Tracks right there. Um, you can also hit Control K. Um, sometimes I find it's easy to lock the other layers so that they don't get sliced as well. Um, so I go Razor Tracks, and that will cut the clip right where that um, where that has come down. And then what you can do is you can select this clip, go to Edit, Copy, go down to the end of it. Paste, and then you can paste these for basically as long as you want the um, the sequence to be. And uh, there will be a little jump. You'll see, kind of in the background, there's a little bit of motion kind of going on in the background where you'll see a little bit of a jump. And uh, the best way to uh, to fix that is just to put a little bit of a uh, transition um, between the clips. So if you do a video transition, a uh, cross dissolve. Um, down here. Then you'll see there's there's much less you don't you can't even see the uh, the transition really um, between the clips. Um, and so the transition is kind of hidden um, with the cross dissolve. And so you can basically extend it out for as long as you want. If you have a really long um, uh, sequence, you know, you know, that you don't want to have to, you know, copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste. And copy and paste um, what I've recommended people to do is to um, do about a minute of these maybe or 30 seconds of, uh, of, of this, these two pieces right here and then put that in its own sequence and then copy that sequence over and over and over and over again. And then that will um, be kind of a perfect um, 
uh, transition for you. Um, so it's a lot quicker to do it to do it in kind of nesting a sequence within the sequence. Um, okay, so that's um, that's kind of the first layout. The uh, the second layout. Let me just do another sequence here, and so we'll call this one Studio One B. Go up here to the uh, Studio folder, and let's see. How about this left loop one right here? This is a kind of a close up of the uh, of the the set itself. Um, it's got this monitor here. Um, that's playing some, you know, and it's all looped and everything. So this is this one is actually a perfect loop because there's no drop down um, at all in the scene, and so you can just copy this one, go to the end of it, and paste it as many times as you want, and it just loops on itself. So there's no uh, no seam or anything like that in the uh, in the transition. Um, Okay, so let me go back to the first studio, and I'm going to copy this broadcaster, this uh, talent footage, so we don't have to redo all the chroma and everything. Um, but I'll copy that one, paste it there. So now we have our presenter, and you can kind of see too now that she's looking the wrong direction. We're going to have to flip her back to where um, to where she was, so that she's uh, going the right direction. So we'll just delete this horizontal flip effect on that clip, and then reposition her like that. So we'll right click our uh, studio, our um, layer names. Say this one studio. Right click talents, and then right click, and we'll call this one B roll there. And uh, a lot of times with this particular clip, we don't have the uh, monitor set up as a, um, <clears throat> as a green chroma. And so a lot of times people ask us, well, how do you, um, how do you put footage into this area right here? And, uh, and you can do it you know, any number of ways. If, you, if you're using something like After Effects or something that allows you to do uh, more of a mask, you can, um, you can add a mask and uh, crop that area out if you want to. Um, the other way to do it is just lay the footage on top of the uh, of the studio layer. So we'll have this uh, B-roll layer <clears throat> and we'll scale it down and then position it generally like that. Scale it up just a little bit. And you can kind of see it goes a little bit beyond what you want it to. So we'll just add a uh, crop effect. So and go to your effects control or FX window there. Drag and drop a crop effect to the uh, B-roll layer. And then we'll just crop a little bit off just to kind of get it in there. Just like that, and so now, uh, and actually, you know what? I think I should. I you can kind of see that where her hand goes behind the uh, the, the monitor, or the footage there. And really, we need to have uh, the talent be on the top layer. So let me just add another track, and we'll say after B roll layer. So we'll add a track up there. We'll move her on top there. And so now her hand goes in front. And so yeah, so you can kind of see, um, you can see how all the different pieces come together. It's really not you know terribly difficult, um, but uh, but you know there's a couple of little tricks and stuff that you can do um, to make things go a little quicker. Um, if you have any questions, um, we'll put your our email in the um, in the uh, description. You're more than welcome to uh, to email us or visit our site. <clears throat> Um, we always love hearing from people um, what software they're using, um, you know how they're using uh, green screen and and virtual sets and that kind of thing. So thanks for watching.